So today we're going to talk about energy and energy flow. And in particular, I want to uh, draw your attention to this video that I found called Energy Doesn't Flow the Way You Think. Um, because this was a real eye opener for me, mainly because the way he visualizes energy flow um, was very different than I think what most people think. Um, part of the problem with physics, it has to do with visualization. I think a lot of people are trying to visualize what's going on. And it's one thing to memorize an equation, but it's another uh, completely different thing to be able to visualize what's going on under the hood. And that's actually one of my, you know, one of my areas of expertise because I'm a computer scientist and I write uh, computer programs for um, in the medical field. And so I write programs to guide a surgeon to, um, you know, to do a biopsy or to, you know, do a surgical procedure. And so uh, visualization is really important if you really want to, you know, do a good job. So, um, so this video, I'm just going to play, I'm going to play about half of this video. I'm not going to play the whole thing because I want you to go and watch it yourself. But it is energy doesn't flow the way you think by um, The Science Asylum. His, his uh, YouTube channel is The Science Asylum. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna play this video and I'm gonna break it from time to time to inject uh, my own uh, interpretation of what he's saying. Not just the ones you find in light. What's the deal with those fields again? Hmm, I, I guess I could do a quickie review. Charges affect the electric field, and moving charges affect the magnetic field. These fields are not attached to the charge. They stay attached to space while the charge moves. If no charges are around, the fields are still there. They're just zero. A similar thing happens around a battery. This ba so this is a really good point. What he said was the field is attached to the space as, and the charge affects the field as it moves through the space. Okay, let's watch that again. And moving charges affect the magnetic field. These fields... Okay, so the charge itself um, affects the field, okay, affects the space, which he calls the field. And um, when the charge starts moving... Fields are not attached to the charge. Okay, the fields are not attached to the charge. That's another important thing that he said. The field is not attached to the charge. As the charge um, appears in the space and moves through the space, it affects the fields. They stay attached to space while the charge moves. If no, no charges are around, the fields are still there. They're just zero. Okay, so that that's just um, a very important point that the field is space, and this this uh, fits in nicely with my um, the field is filled with electron-positron pairs, and that those electron-positron pairs are in fact the field. So the field is in space. The field is space, and uh, this is essentially what he is saying. If no charges are around, the fields are still there. They're just zero. A similar thing happens around a battery. This battery can be thought of as two equal but opposite charges. Those charges will affect the electric field. But according to the pointing vector, we don't get an energy flow without also having a magnetic field. Okay, so there's a really important point. Energy does not flow unless you have both the electric field and the magnetic field in place. Okay, so this is super important. The battery isn't going to lose energy just sitting there. It has to be connected to something. Here's the electric field around the battery again, drawn a little simpler. If we connect some wires and a light bulb, the field will distort a little. Even though the charge and that extra stuff is balanced, it still channels the field through itself. The field in those materials is strong enough to push the charge along. Now that there's a closed loop, the electric field will cause a steady current. And where there's moving charge, there's a magnetic field. So now we have an electric field and a magnetic field. According to the pointing vector, we get an energy flow. But this cross product means the flow has to be perpendicular to both fields. Okay, so that's an important part. Okay, so both the electric field and the magnetic field, which are orthogonal to each other, right, which are um, 90 degrees to each other, 
will create energy that is orthogonal to both of these vectors. So in a direction that neither of these guys is pointing into. The flow of charge is the same direction as the electric field, which can't be the same as the flow of energy. According to pointing, the energy cannot flow in the same direction as the charge. Wait, what? Exactly. When I realized this, it broke all my intuitions about circuits, but here's what everything looked like when I put it all back together. If we zoom in on one of the wires a little, we've got a strong electric field inside moving the current along, and a little electric field outside. We also have a magnetic field inside and outside. Using the pointing vector, we get an energy flow toward the center of the wire. The Okay, we get an energy flow toward the center of the wire. Okay, this will become important in a minute. Energy comes from the field outside the wire. Energy comes from the field outside the wire. Energy comes from the field inside, sorry, outside in the space around the wire. And it's flowing towards the center of the wire. Didn't you say earlier that the energy comes from the battery? Yeah, but, but it happens indirectly. Inside the battery, the electric field points the opposite way, but the magnetic field points the same way. If we look at the battery the same way we did the wire, the energy flows out of the battery and into the field. So the energy the wires and light bulb gain from the field is the same amount of energy that the battery loses to the field. The energy flow in this circuit looks like this. It's cray-cray. It doesn't even... <laughs> Sorry. It's cray-cray. I love that. It's cray-cray. Let's look at that again. The energy flow in this circuit looks like this. Okay. Do you see what I'm seeing? Okay. Do you see what I'm seeing? I'm not going to say anything yet, but just wondering if you see what I'm seeing. It's cray-cray. It doesn't even matter if it's AC or DC. With alternating current or AC, the current just moves back and forth because the electric field keeps switching directions. But so does the magnetic field. If this changes direction, and so does this, the two effects cancel. The energy flow maintains its direction. Even in an AC circuit, the energy flow is out of the source and into the devices. How can that possibly be? Aren't AC generators like miles away? Yeah, but, but that's totally fine. Remember, these fields are everywhere and affected by all charges everywhere. The energy coming out of a power source doesn't have to be the same energy going into your devices. Conservation of energy just says they have to be the same amount. If you calculate the amount of energy flow across the surface of this wire, you will get exactly what you'd expect for the power loss to heat and light. So how does the energy actually flow in a circuit? The energy that makes a circuit work comes from the fields around them. A source of energy like a battery just replenishes what gets used. And all the electric current does is provide the mechanism we need to make the energy flow. <laughs> I love that Sorry, part. Was mine. Okay, so let's go back to this. Beautiful animation, beautiful visualization. Replenishes what gets used. Okay. And all the electric current does. So what I'm seeing here is that the battery is, is um, releasing energy into the space, obviously, around the circuit, but the energy is not flowing towards the light bulb like most people think it is, or it's not flowing through the wire, causing, you know, the light bulb to light. But what is going Does on? This provide the mechanism we need to make the energy flow. Okay. So the circuit provides the mechanism we need to make the energy flow. A source of energy like a battery just replenishes what gets used. And all the electric current does is provide the mechanism we need to make the energy flow. Okay, so the electric current provides the mechanism we need to make the energy flow. The current flowing creates the conditions, okay? Because the, the current flowing creates a magnetic field and the magnetic field and this electric field which is moving with the current um, combined together they work together the two um, incommensurate principles of the dielectric and the magnetic work together to create the right conditions to make the energy flow 
and the energy is flowing from do you like a battery just replenishes what gets you just turn that down it's flowing from space to the center of the wires which is counter spatial the center of the wires are counter spatial so the energy is flowing from space to counter space and out of the battery from counter space back to space now of course that's just that's a it's a loose way of, of saying it okay this is just a way of visualizing this is what it looks like to me it looks like if the center of the wire is counter space the energy is coming from counter space into space around the wire and it's going from the space around the wire back to counter space the center of the wire and this can only happen when the current is flowing because that's the only way you can get the magnetic field and create the right conditions to make the energy flow so that's uh, that's all I'm going to say about that today this this is a really wonderful uh, visualization and that is really funny Sorry, you was that is really funny so watch this guy's videos okay watch this guy's videos uh, I want to make sure you can see that this is the science asylum okay watch his videos they're funny and he's really really good so um, that's all I'm gonna say for now have a great day